It's all yours. Well, it's been a privilege for me to, to be in here this week and to share love with uh, some of you. There's a lot of you uh, here in Iowa, this church. But uh, I did my best. Uh, I, I believe I ate everything I was served. Uh, that's a sign of a good missionary. Uh, someone said, said it like this. said, Lord, where you lead me, I will follow. And whatever you feed me, I will swallow. Uh, so that makes up a, makes a good missionary. And it's just a good, you know, just a good, uh, uh, a good person that you have at your home, right? You just want them to enjoy your food. Um, my name is Noe, Noe Hernandez, and I served overseas with my family. Uh, I'm married with uh, three kids. There's a picture, I believe, of my family. You probably have seen this picture. This is my, my, uh, my, my wife, Kyla, Kyla Hernandez. And uh, she is actually from native from Iowa. She's uh, southwest, uh, south, uh, southwest, southwest Iowa. She, born, she was born on a farm, farm girl. And my oldest daughter, her name is Magdalena. Magdalena is 18 years old. She is now attending a community college in uh, Council Bluffs. She's at home, but she's online taking classes. Santiago, Santiago is a junior in high school. And uh, he goes to Shenandoah High School, just south of Essex, Iowa, is where we live, population 700. This year, when, when uh, 705, we moved in mid-year. Uh, and then Eden, little Eden is 12 years old, and Eden has been homeschooled. She's at home, so she gets up at 9 and is down by noon, and she loves it. So she's like, okay, I'm done. I got all this time. So I've been, uh, I've been married for 20 years now. 20 years of marriage. Now, happily marry, a little less than that, but we work at it. You know, we have some good, some bad days, and most of are good. Uh, but we, we praise the Lord for being with us all this time. So as a family, we served uh, the Lord in Paraguay. We've been there for 10 years. And from time to time, we come home, and we go around uh, churches, and we share what God is doing in Paraguay and what God is doing through us. Uh, and uh, we share a little bit of how God uses us overseas. And this morning, I, I, it is my privilege to be with you and to also to tell you a little bit about that, but in, more, than, more than anything, to encourage you as a church to continue to be the church, you know, and, and, and uh, so, that, so that God's kingdom can be, could be uh, accomplished, can accomplish more us as part of that, uh, that kingdom here on earth. And God put a message in my heart uh, early this, this year, as we came back, and I knew that I was going to be traveling around, many, around churches, and, and this theme of, of working together, you know, working together, uh, we, we're going out through the Bible, and we're going to see how is it God, that God uh, encourages us to come and, that, and encourages that we must, must work together. But before we even get there, you know, uh, you guys know who, uh, who was Steve Jobs, Right? Steve Jobs, uh, probably most of us know. Uh, most of us carry a little bit of himself in our pockets, right? There's a little bit of Steve Jobs right there. Right? We carry him everywhere. Uh, who has, uh, well, some of us carry Android, right? Android phones. For those that carry Android, we will be praying for you. Uh, God would show you the way. <laughs> But these days, day and age, right, we can't do anything without this device. Well, this man, Steve Jobs, had a wonderful idea. In 1986, shortly after he was forced out of Apple, Steve Jobs bought a small uh, company, uh, computer manufacturing uh, company named Pixar. And in 2000, uh, he relocated this company to an abandoned Del Monte Cannon factory. So he bought this building. And when I came across this story, I thought that this was a building where Mexican food was made. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to go to work every day, and the first thing you smell in the morning, mmm, are refried beans, a couple of, you know, scrambled eggs, and two pieces of bacon, Right? But no, my wife said, nope, it wasn't uh, Mexican food. It was a fruit canning company. So I said, thank you for ruining my illustration, Kyla. <laughs> so when he moved his, co the, his company to this place, the original plan uh, called for three buildings, 
with separate offices for computer scientists, animators, and the Pixar executives. But Job immediately scrapped that idea, and instead of three buildings, there was going to be just one single vast space with, uh, with an atrium in the middle. Uh, but before Jobs, uh, uh, for Jobs, it was not just about creating a space. He needed to make people go there. And the primary challenge for Pixar, as he saw it, was getting his different cultures to work together and collaborate. So he had this challenge. So Jobs saw separate offices as a design problem. So he began with shifting a few things into this empty space. And the first thing he did was he moved the mailboxes. And he moved the mailbox, mailboxes, and so people were going and checked the mail. And, you know, they would cross paths, and he thought hopefully they'll start talking to each other, and, and they'll start working, working each other and collaborating. And then that, that kind of worked. Then he moved the, the room, meeting rooms, and he said, now, now, now when they're meeting together, as, they, as some people are coming in and others are coming out, maybe they'll start, you know, uh, collaborating and meeting and, and interacting with each other. Because he was talking about three different types of people, right, that are very, very different. And then that kind of worked, but then he moved the cafeteria. He thought, if I move the food to this place, maybe people would come and start working together. They will sit down around that table, you know, they share their chimichangas or whatever they brought for lunch, and they'll start working together. And then he did that, but then ultimately he moved the coffee. He said, if I move the coffee to this place, then people would have to go there and start talking to each other. Kind of just like what the coffee shop do you have out here, right? Everybody goes through there. And, you have, and, and they have to talk to each other and, and that you get served coffee. So he did all these things because Steve realized that when people run into each other, when they make eye contact, things happen. So here is a man in the secular world that realized that when people locked eyes, saw each other in the eye, started working together, magic happened. And... That's where we get all those, those movies, right? Those awesome movies that we get. You know, we get Shrek, Shrek 1, Shrek 2, Shrek, The Return of Shrek, Shrek Attacks Again, right? I mean, I get all those wonderful things and all the, all the animation. Well, it started by people coming together, working together, because there have been some studies out there where it says that if we come and work together, enables better, sol better problem solving, unlocks potential for innovation, makes for happier employees, enhances personal growth, lowers the risk of burnout, gives opportunities for growth, boosts productivity, allows for smarter, uh, for smarter risk taking, yields fewer mistakes. So this has been proven and documented that when people come and collaborate and work, in together, and work together side by side, all these things happen. Well, the same thing happens when the people of God come together. And we acknowledged and realized that we must come together. And there's a story in the Old Testament, Exodus 17, Exodus 17, where we have the Israelites going against the Amalekites. And the story goes like this, verse, verse 8 through 13. That the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the mountain. And as long as Moses held his hands his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. So when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him. And he said on it, Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other. And so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. So we have here this wonderful story, right? Where God 
God is, wants to bring them the victory. But the Israelites must come together. And so we have four different characters, right? We have, we have Moses, we have, we have Aaron, we have Hur, and we have Joshua, right? And so in this story, it is a wonderful story that teaches us that things had to come together. That, that, that these this different characters had different things to do. So when we working together, the first thing we need to do is to acknowledge that we have different roles. Church, we have different roles. In this story, it is very, is very simple and it is very clear that the different characters in this, in this story have different roles. What, are, what was the role of Moses? Not everybody at once. What was his role? It was to go up on the mountain, right? Raise the staff of God and, and, and intercede for, people, for the people, right? That was his role. What was the role of Aaron and her? Very simple, right? They saw that Moses was struggling. He could not hold his hands up, his arms up, and he was getting tired. And their job was to kind of assist him, right? Be there. And kind of help him out. And what was, the, what was the role of Joshua? Hey, hey, why don't you gather some men? You know, get, get some of those guys that just can't stay still and love to fight. <laughs> get some of those guys and go and fight. So you can, see, you can see in this story that different people had different roles. So not too, uh, too long after we came back from Paraguay, back to southwest Iowa where Kyla's brother, old, youngest brother farms. Uh, he said, no way, uh, I have a job for you guys or I, have help. I need help. Can you please come and help me? And I said, sure, Michael, we can go help you. So what is it? And he said, well, I have a problem. Uh, some beavers uh, built a dam. So from one field to the other, the water can't go through and, I, and it's, it's just created a problem. So, so I need to do that. But I've tried a few things and they're not working. So here, this is my son inside of a, of a probably 10 feet tall tube and it is, it is completely plugged. And my son is about almost six feet high. So, so it's about five feet of just sticks and mud and it's all really stuck together, right? And, and we need to do that. So, so he says, I have a couple of ideas. So we showed up at the job site, there's the next picture, and he has this giant excavator. And he said, okay, the plan is to, is to uh, feed a, a metal cable and chains and chained, and chained uh, rubber tires, tractor tires, huge, and then drag them across this tube and hopefully that would unplug um, it. Okay, so here's a picture and, and there's these giant tires, right? And you farmers, I mean, this is, this is how child's play, right? Yeah, it was like, yes, easy. Yeah. But the problem was that before we did all this, next picture, is that someone needed to climb down there. And let me tell you, roles were defined. My role was to keep my kids safe, all right? The role of my brother-in-law was to basic, to, to uh, maneuver, right? To drive the excavator. And man, that thing looks like a modern dinosaur. This is a huge machine. And somehow I was going to tell my kids to jump into this bucket, be lowered down into the stoop, climb out, walk across, pull the chain and put this chain through these tires and then do all of that. We were just glad that my wife wasn't there because the party was going to be over before the party started. <laughs> so my role was to keep my kids safe and, and to tell, you know, keep my, so I had my brother-in-law telling me, okay, so I can't see the bucket anymore. How, is it, how lower do I need to go in and how close to the tube? And then my kids is like, was talking to me. I was talking to Michael. Michael was, I was talking to Michael to me. I was talking to my kids. And let me tell you, roles were defined and we had to work together. So that we were able to jump into that too. We, we, we did the tire thing. Next picture. And, but it, it didn't work. So we spent the next two days climbing in there and doing it all by hand. And then the next picture, you could tell that we did a good job and that it was clear of debris. For some reason, somehow, my brother and I thought that he could have convinced the, only three Mexicans in town to come together, hire them, and get the job done. Because he knew we could get it done. 
Well, it's not three Mexicans. It's two because my kids are half. So <laughs> one and two. Anyway, so God asks us the same thing. God has given us, has given you, has given me different roles, different roles to be able to come together. Paul tells to the Corinthians in chapter 3, 1 first, first Corinthians, he says, Paul says, what after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task, I plant as a seed, Apollos water it, but God has been making it grow. So who assigns these things? Who assigns a role? God does, right? God does. He is, it comes from him. Because even, even God himself has taken different roles throughout history. God is our creator, right? And then he took the form of a God, our savior, through Jesus Christ. That he came to this earth, he walked among us, right? And then the Holy Spirit, our guide, our teacher, our gift, right? Gift giver. He came later on and he has guided the church since then. So we, we can see that taking different roles, God having different roles in God's kingdom in order to come and work together, it is essential. John 15, 5 says, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, right? So we have a role in this kingdom thing this coming together is to abide in Jesus because when we do that, we will bear much fruit. We must come together. First Corinthians chapter 12, it says that there are, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit, different types of, different, uh, uh, the same spirit dis distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So I don't know. I don't know what kind of role you have in God's kingdom. You know, I don't know what God has asked you to do recently. Uh, but, you know, I know that Old Spice, you know, the brand Old Spice. I don't know how Old Spice is. But I'm pretty sure that Moses, that morning he got up, did not use any Old Spice on him. And he went up on that mountain, and here they are losing this battle. He's raising his hands. He's sweating up a storm. <laughs> and then now Aaron and her, woof, they have to get under those arms, all right? And they have to hold his, hold his arms up. And you know what? Isn't that true? Sometimes in, in, in God's church, God's family, Sometimes like, you're like, you know what, this is a stinky role. I don't want to do it. But guess what? Where did the roles, those roles come from? They come from above. You know, it was very wonderful this morning to be greeted by Asher. Ha. That touched my heart. You know who Asher was? Who is? He greeted you this morning. That was wonderful. Hey. Right? So I don't know. I don't know what kind of role God has, has, had you for, has had you for a year or two years, many years. But as it takes all of us to accept all these this roles that God has given us and, 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 and coming together to, in order to work together for his kingdom. Second of all, uh, for, in order for us to come and work together, we have to acknowledge that we have different giftedness. We have different gifts. You have Romans 12 Romans, uh, well, Moses uh, in this story, right? Romans 12 talks about that. Romans 12 says, verse 6 to 8, that we have different kinds of gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is a prophecy, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is to serve, then serve. If it is to teach, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is given, then give cheerfully. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, to do uh, uh, mercy, do it cheerfully, right? So we have different gifts. Uh, Paul reminds us of this. And we, when we look at this story uh, and this battle, right, we have Moses, we have Aaron, we have her, and we have Joseph. And we can say that Moses had probably the gift of leadership, right? 
he knew how to lead people. Or at least God said, well, you're going to learn how to be a leader, right? Because here are these people, they need to follow someone. So there, Moses, you must lead. And he did, and he did that well. And then we have Aaron. Remember Aaron? When, I remember when Moses said, no, Lord, there's no way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to uh, Egypt and talk to those people. Because his excuse was what? He said, I can't. I can't speak, right? I stutter for whatever reason, uh, however he sounded like. And then God said, well, here is Aaron. Aaron's going to go before you and he's going to speak. You're going to speak to Aaron. Aaron's going to speak to Pharaoh. And Aaron is a good speaker and, and he's going to be there for you. Okay. And then we have her, you know, and we hear all those wonderful stories about her in the Old Testament. And then there's some in the New Testament, right? We know all of them. Amen. Who said amen? <laughs> okay, I heard is two verses he's mentioned here, and then one in a couple of chapters after this. That's it. There's nothing about, about, about this guy other than this, this episode and one more. But man, you can read between the lines, and I'm just thinking, okay, what was his gift? What was hers' gift? And I'm, and I'm, you know, Moses is there struggling, trying to keep his arms up, and he's getting tired. And I bet it was her that said, man, he's getting tired. And he saw that, that, that rock, that stone, and he said, I better, give, I better give Mo a chair. So he got a chair for Moses to sit down. Right? And then, and then he saw that those hands were getting tired. He was looking over the, over the hill, and it's like, we're losing. Aaron, we're losing. And then he's, it was probably his idea. And he said, we better get under those arms and, and, you know, and hold his, held his arms up. I bet it was him. So you would think, you would assume that he had the gift of serving. And then Joshua. Joshua just liked to fight. You know, when, remember when you were a kid and there were a couple of kids that just loved to fight. They're just, they're just like, we're a little feisty, huh? So Joshua was one of those guys. He is just out there and he was serving and he said you know what if someone has to go and be the fighter i will fight i'll get some gather some men and i'll go down there so god has given us has given you different giftedness and for some of us you know or abilities some of us should have that microphone and, and sing and to for some of us that microphone should be far 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 away and it's okay Amen? Oh, come on. Don't get offended. Amen. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Some of us are great greeters. We have great smiles. And some of us shouldn't. <laughs> right? Have you noticed? Well, at least if you go to Paraguay, the people that greet you at the stores have like the greatest smiles. And they're very cheerful. And they say, well, they, well, I don't say welcome. They say, bienvenido a la tienda. ¿Qué le puedo servir? ¿En qué le puedo ayudar, señor Hernández? Right? Man, you want to just go in there and buy everything. Right? Just by the way they greet you. So God has given us talents. God has given us different gifts to serve and come together and work for his kingdom. So in the mission field, Noé Hernández and, his, and, and my wife, Kyle Hernández, we can't do it all. And we were never supposed to do it all. We have a team of people, and I'm going to introduce you to them. And the first couple is Luis and Olga Felipa. Luis and Olga are these wonderful people. They have been in ministry for a long time. And, you know, uh, there's a tagline of, a, of a insurance, uh, I think farmer's insurance. We are farmers. We know a thing or two because we have seen a thing or two. Okay. Maybe you guys don't watch TV much. Uh, Luis and Olga just know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two. And they are encouragers. You sit with them. You know, it doesn't matter what happened in the week. It doesn't matter what you're going through. They just have a way to encourage you. Lift you up. You, know, you go walk into their home and that, and, and that door is so big because you're, you know, you're walking like this and you're sad. And you talk to them. You get up. You get up. You know, from that chair, and you walk out of their home, and you think, I mean, you think that that door is little. You know, it's not, a, it's, you're just puffed up, and you're like, you know, I'm ready to tackle the world again. They're that kind of people. They're the kind of encouragers. 
And, and that's a wonderful gift to have on the mission field, especially when you're far away, you know, and, and you just need to talk to someone. Then we have another wonderful couple, uh, Dean and Donna Bracewell. Dean and Donna Bracewell are just teachers at heart. They love to, to teach others. Donna teaches ESL classes, and man, people love to come to her classes. Uh, she started with a handful of people, you know, five or six, and right now, after three years, there's like about 30 students come into her classes, ESL classes. And that tells you something. And Dean, Dean just loves to teach. He always has a, uh, a new class, new material. Uh, he teaches at our Bible Institute, Imab. And he just loves, love. They love, both love to teach. And then we have uh, another couple. We have uh, Joseph and Yolanda. And Joseph and Yolanda, you know, are that kind of people where they, you go into an elevator and what is it that you do these days? Get your phone out, right? And everybody's looking at their phone. And they, might, they could be there three or four people, and no one is talking to each other in that elevator. But man, Joseph and Yolanda are the people that they're like, hey, hola, buenos dias, como esta? How are you? And they start talking to you. And they are those weird people that want to be friends with you no matter what. And because of that, that kind of people, God has used them to go into new neighborhoods, new neighborhoods and start two churches in the last three years. Come alongside other believers and be able to do that because they don't know a stranger. They just learn. They know how to build relationships and, and they're just wonderful people. And then you have Noé and Kyla Hernandez. Uh, I might not have the gift of encouragement, but at least my goal is not to discourage. <laughs> But I believe, we believe that we have the gift of, pers- uh, of uh, hospitality. And I tell people that I, you know, I started smoking and I, I can't stop. Because there's nothing better than going to your favorite local store and get a giant piece of brisket. Taking it home, getting it out of the bag. Tr- start trimming that a little bit. Not too much because you want plenty of fat. And then put it in that smoker, right? Like a brand new, like a baby, brand new baby, right? When it falls asleep in your arms, and then you put it in that smoker, and you baby it for hours. Can we say an amen to that? All right? And then when that brisket is done, and whoever we invite to the house, we say, hey, why don't you come to the house and have, uh, have dinner with us? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I put a brisket this morning. Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. So I don't think we've said, have anybody said no to brisket yet. So we like to have people at home and share a home and, and cook a good meal for them. So it takes all of us. It takes all of us to come together by using our different roles, our different giftedness in order to do one thing. And, and isn't it interesting that God created us so different from one another? I mean, we are. We are very different. But I find it funny that he created us so different. And then he said, okay, now I want you to come together and work together and figure it out. And I think he did this because when we work together, we complement each other. And Paul told the Corinthians this. He said, basically, he made a case for us to do this. And, and he made a, a, a very compelled case. In chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Paul says to the Corinthians, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God plays the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So, folks, we are one body. One. And according to these verses, God, right, plays the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Amen? Isn't that wonderful that he has done this for us? For the good of his kingdom, for the good of his church, For the sake of all of us. And then he goes a little farther. And I'm not sure exactly what was going on among the Corinthians. But he says to them in verse 21. He says, 
that the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. You know, we cannot afford to, to, tell, to say to one another, you know what, why don't you sit this one out? I got this. I got this because I know I can do a better job than you and I would rather do it alone. Have you met some folks like that? Maybe. If you have not met them, you might be one of them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we do that. But Paul says, hey, 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 wait a minute. You can't do that. We can't afford doing that. We can't. We must work together. We are different. Yes, we are different. And God, that's the, God, the way God designed it. And we can say that to, to, to each other. God wants us to work together. And that includes us, the, our church family, right? And it also includes other, other families of faith. And many of them are here in our town, right? Where they also are part of the kingdom. They're also part of the body. And they are also reaching and doing and going, thrive, uh, striving for the same purpose. And the third thing, and the reason why we must come and work together, is because God has given us one common goal. Only one common goal. And that it is to us, and it is to our other families of faith in this town and across the world. And that one common goal, we find it in Matthew chapter 28, when Jesus himself said to his disciples, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of ages. We must come together and work together in order to accomplish this goal that God has given us. Because when we do this, I believe that we're going to be able to go to the hard places, the hard, those places where it's hard to go in. And, and, and the theme of the year, this, this year, it's going to the hard places. But I realized that, yes, there are parts of the world where I can't go in and as a missionary, right? Because uh, I would get to, the, to that specific country and they would say, well, what's, what do you do for a living? I would say, well, I am a, I am a minister. And they would say, well, then you can, nice meet you, but you, you need to go back. And I'll be like, okay, then I will go back. But there are some of us that might have a different profession and God would say, you know what, you can go and live there and I can use you. And that's great. And that's great to be able to do that because working together for the same mission. In 1962, you probably have heard this analogy, President John F. Kennedy visited NASA for the first time. And during his tour of the facility, he met a janitor who was, who was carrying a broom down the hallway. So President uh, then casually asked the janitor, what is it that you do for NASA? What is it that you do for NASA? And this janitor very proudly stopped and he looked at the president and said, I am helping to put a man in the moon. I am helping to put a man in the moon, he said, very proudly. Because that janitor saw himself, not just someone that cleaned the bathrooms and those hallways, he saw himself as being a part of the greater task of NASA, and that was to send the first man to the moon. So it doesn't matter what role you have, right? It doesn't matter what giftedness you have. God has called all of us, all of us, to see ourselves as part of the greater calling. And that is, right, to take the gospel to the ends of the world, the ends of the world. Matthew, Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, 14 says that, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached into the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end 
will come, and then the end will come. This is something that there are, there are founding father would chant in the streets, and they would say, bring back the king, because when this gospel is preached in every nation, in every nation around the world, then Jesus will, re will return. Jesus will be back. We'll bring back our king. And what is this message? What is this message? A simple one. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God right, sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Revelation 10, 9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So we must come together and work together. Accept a role. It might be a stinky role, you know. <laughs> but you know, you know what is my favorite role? My favorite role is the cinema role. From Cinnabon. As I'm walking down the airport. Because the whole airport smells like a cinema roll. A giant cinema roll. And I order one for myself. And it's there gigantic. And I eat the whole thing. I manage, right? So it doesn't matter what your role is. It doesn't matter what God, God designs it, right? God gave it to you. And it doesn't matter what gifts you have or gifts that you don't have. God designed it that way, right? For us to come together, together and, and, and to work towards this common goal. To work towards, towards, towards the take the gospel to the ends of the earth. I came across a wonderful story of a name, I would call, of, a name call, of, a, of a gentleman. His name was Charles Plum. And he had completed 75 combat missions when he was shot down. Paul was uh, ejected of and uh, parachuted into enemy's camp where he spent six years in a Vietnam prison. But one day, a man came up to him and, and said, You are plumb. You flew jet fighters in Vietnam. You were shot down. Plum was confused and asked how the man knew him knew that. I packed your parachute, the man replied. The man that shook his hand and said, I guess it worked. <laughs> and Plum assured him it did, he had said, it had, and said, if your, if, if your shoot hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. So Plum thought a lot about the man who held who he had held his fate in and did not know him. And the many, many times that he probably crossed paths and did not know this man, but yet entrusted that this man packed his parachute for him to be safe. So I want to take a, a time this morning and to thank you. Thank you for, for packing my parachute. Because this morning, this week, I did not know any of you. Uh, I met Pastor Jeff and the staff two months ago. And yet, I've been on the field for 10 years. And I know, I know, I know that you packed my parachute. And I was out there, and I've been out there with my family, and I didn't have to worry about it about much because I knew that here in Newton, Iowa, there were people, faithful people, they were praying for me, that they were given, they were even going and sending. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for that. And I'm telling, and I, back in, and I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you this morning to look at the person around you and be like, yeah, I, I want to pack your parachute. I want to pack your parachute too, right, in order to work together. So going back to the story, back to the story in Exodus, we have different roles, and that's fine. They're given by the Lord. 
We have different giftedness. And that's fine. That's okay. I can sing. And maybe you can't. And some people challenged me to sing this morning. But pastor, that's for another day. <laughs> uh, but we must, we must learn how to work together in order to accomplish the same mission that God has given all of us. And that is to take his gospel to the ends of the world. Amen? Amen? So let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning. Lord, thank you for, first and foremost, to calling us to, to you, Lord. Uh, every single one of us this morning has a different story of how they came to know you, Lord. And how you use someone, someone to, to introduce them to you, Lord, and to your truth and, and to your saving grace. And, and uh, Lord, I, I just want to ask that you would encourage this congregation to, to be, uh, to assure, assure them, Lord, of the role that they have this and today, the giftedness that, they, that you've given them, Lord, for them to come together and continue to impact this community for you, Lord, and to continue to, to go and, and send and give, Lord, so that other people across the world can get to know you in their, in their language, Lord, by, by sending people like me, by packing people's parachutes so that we could go out there and reach the people uh, through them. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen.